what's going on guys. Today, February 25th, 2014, Apple released 10.9.2 out to everybody. We've seen the developer seeds for quite some time now and finally they released it. So as I typically do in my quick Hackintosh tip upgrade videos, I'm gonna show you how this update performs across two different computers, which are two very different computers. I have my main workstation down here with that I've used for three and a half years now, seen every single operating system since 10.6.0 and I'm gonna show you how it does on that, but also I'm gonna show you on a more common system that I'm sure most of you have, and that's gonna be a Haswell Core i3 based system right up here on a test bench. So without rambling anymore, uh, I'll get a little bit more into the specs later. Let's go ahead and get right into the update. So here we are on my primary machine, and just to give you a quick idea of the specs I'm running, I do have a 3.36 gigahertz first generation Intel Core i7, 12 gigabytes of memory, and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 card. And so that's a pretty standard hardware configuration by you know today's standards. And so in order to update, you can go ahead and download a combo update from Apple, but I really have yet to see a difficult update in terms of you know even Mavericks itself was fine, 10.9.1 was fine, and so I really don't think 10.9.2 is any different. But as always on any system, whether it's you know Windows or any, any operating system on any system, be sure you back up your stuff before you do any kind of an update just in case something does go wrong. However, this is especially true on the Hackintosh because let's face it, this operating system is not supposed to be on this hardware. So uh, really quick, just to give you guys a quick overview of what's new in 10.9.2, uh, we have the ability to make and receive FaceTime audio calls. That's for the win, that is awesome. FaceTime audio is really nice. The, the call quality on my iPhone absolutely blows that away of just a, a traditional phone call. So I'm really glad to be able to take that convenience and have it on my computer as well. Same thing as messages, uh, ability to block messages. So there's definitely a lot of, uh, I guess, social features, social improvements here. Uh, improvements in mail, that's been a huge thing for a lot of people. Uh, ever since Mavericks came out, me personally, me personally, I just use Apple's Me, uh, you know, the Me.com. So I I never have issues with mail, but hopefully they fix a lot of the Gmail issues that have been going around. Uh, improves autofill uh, compatibility in Safari. A few more VPN things, you know, nothing huge, nothing groundbreaking as usual. But one thing I really hope that they fix this time around is the Finder bug. I'll come in here and I'll have a you know just like a little screenshot or something on my desktop, and I'll go to Quick Look it, and 30 seconds later it'll actually pop it up. The whole point of Quick Look is for it to be quick. And on, you know, on this type of hardware with a solid state drive, there's just no excuse. So I know I'm not the only one having that problem. So I really hope that Apple does increase the speed of Finder because I find that it hangs a lot across all three of my computers. So with that out of the way, I'm just going to go ahead and click update right here from the App Store. So we're going to click download here. And as you can see, we have a pretty big download ahead of us. We have about 770 megabytes to download. Now, depending on what system you're on or you know what software that system is on, you know, maybe you're on just 10.9.0, you could have more to download. And so this file size is relative to your system, which system you have if you're on a real Mac, things like that. But mine personally comes in at 769 megabytes. So this will take some time to download. Also, while this is downloading, I do want to say that you can choose to download the combo update if you please. Now, I have a whole video on the differences between a Delta update and a combo update. So if you want to watch that video before you go ahead and update your system, feel free to do so by clicking the annotation right here. Now, as you can see, my download did finish and it wants to automatically restart my computer here. So uh, I'm just going to hit uh, install in an hour. But as you can see, when you do that right here, it actually lets you restart and do it right now. I just did that, you know, for the purpose of the video because it's not going to be exported by then. But regardless, uh, so after a restart, we'll see how it does. Going over to my other machine really quick, here we have a Haswell system with an Intel Core i3, 8GB of memory, and an AMD Radeon HD6850 graphics card. I'm going to be using the same method to update this computer as I really don't see the need to go out to Apple's website to download the combo update. So after opening the App Store, I'm going to follow the exact same steps as I did on my main machine. You'll notice that the file size this time around is a bit bigger. This is because the Haswell system has been running 10.9.0 rather than 10.9.1 was like my main machine. Something to keep in mind. After clicking restart, the machine will proceed with installing the updates followed by, you guessed it, restarting. Upon rebooting, we're presented with a bootloader, and after booting back up into OS X, we get a familiar completing installation screen. Just a few minutes later, both machines boot successfully into OS X. Here we are back on my main machine after the update, and after coming up to about this Mac, you can see right here we did in fact upgrade successfully to version 10.9.2. So everything's so far so good, but the only caveat here is that I did in fact lose my audio, and that's probably the most common thing to lose when updating your Hackintosh. Fortunately, it's actually very easy to fix. So in case you guys have done this before, you know what to do, but if you haven't, all we're going to need for this is a copy of MultiBeast. Now I know some of you guys really don't prefer MultiBeast tools. 
that's fine. You can just go find the kernel extension and install it manually however you'd like. MultiBeast is just an awesome utility. It works for me and it works for many other people, so I just tend to use it. Makes life really easy. There's nothing wrong with things being easy after all. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come up to drivers and here you really just have to know what your hardware runs. Uh, my motherboard it does in fact use a DSDT so underneath the audio Realtek ALC XXX I'm going to select with DSDT. If you're on say a Haswell system you do not need a DSDT so we're going to do with DSDT. My motherboard uses an ALC 889 audio chipset and that's literally all I need to do after the update. Everything else seems to be working just fine including internet, graphics, etc. So that's literally all I need to do. So I'm going to come up here, click build, install, agree, enter that extremely secure password which I've made about 75% more secure and we're going to install. So there you guys go, there was 10.9.2 being installed on two completely different platforms, and despite the age differences in the hardware being about 4 years, both systems actually followed the exact same installation process, right from the app store, followed by reinstalling the audio kernel extension after the actual OS installed, and boom, perfectly working systems, graphics, internet, audio, everything working just fine. So be sure to share your experiences with 10.9.2 down below in the comments because as you just saw, mine was flawless so I can give the double thumbs up on updating. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this video helped. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com. Be sure to give that like button a big ol' smack for me and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.